mission trip. Verse 32 says, And it came to pass, as Peter passed throughout all quarters, he came down also to the saints which dwelt in Lydia. Now, all quarters means all the surrounding areas, and I did not take a moment to even look at the ge geographical maps to see where from where he was to where he ended up in Lydia, but uh, I'm sure it was Samaria and Asia Minor and places like that. So when Peter goes from here to there, or when Paul later, now that he's Paul, or any of the disciples of Christ, it's not just a walk through the woods to get to another town. It's a mission trip. It's a ministry. And it's uh, something that the Lord has laid on their heart to do from here to there. It's not, you know, there's people maybe in small communities. A lot of times, if you look today, uh, evangelists, they go from big city to big city. And hopefully some of the people from these small cities go to where this gathering is, but if they don't, they're missing out on uh, God's word. But Peter is one of the few that made it his mission to go to these small places where a lot of people would say they don't deserve it. You know, everybody does. He was one to really want to spread the word. So this is Peter's ministry. Uh, remember in the very first chapter of Acts, he's upstairs in the upper room. And one of the greatest miracles of all time occurred when Peter preached. Remember what it was? Thousands of people from different countries, different languages, different dialects from the same area, maybe. They all heard his sermon as though he was speaking, they're speaking it in their language. Crystal clear. There was no dialect difference. There was no utterances of, like if he was from southern Jerusalem, the northerner wouldn't get it because y'all talk so funny in the south. But no. Peter spoke. So the miracle was Peter was already filled with the Holy Spirit. This is where the Holy Spirit came into the upper room and filled all the people that were hearing this. So this was a preacher miracle and this was a recipient miracle. People heard it in their language and it said thousands, thousands received Christ that day because of the power of the Holy Spirit. So this was just the start of Peter's ministry. All right, now we go to verse 33. And there he found a certain man named Aeneas. thank you which had kept his bed eight years and was sick with the palsy. Now, he kept his bed. That means he didn't pack it up and keep it and take it with him everywhere he went. He was laid up, bedridden for eight years. And the palsy was a, uh, an illness, something like maybe Parkinson's and uh, the baseball player, Lou Gehrig's disease combined. Loss of total control of, except for maybe being able to breathe. And that, and both those diseases do affect the uh, pulmonary. muscular disease? Huh? Is it like muscular? It's muscular, it's, it's yeah. pulmonary. It eventually takes over the whole body, everything. Pretty much he was dead from the neck down. Pretty much. Only faculty he had about him was his mind. But anyway, Peter happened upon this man. I, I hate to use that word happen, but the Lord led him to this man, Ananias, who had been sick for eight years. Peter said unto him, Ananias, Jesus Christ maketh thee whole. Arise and make thy bed. And he arose eventually, after weeks of therapy, after months of rehab. No. He arose immediately. He was able to walk immediately. All he had to say in Jesus' name, you are healed. Pick up your bed and go. Didn't Jesus do this very thing in Matthew? Matthew wrote an account about that. Uh, Four twenty-four. Matthew 
4.24. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those that had the palsy, and he healed them. This was Christ. So Peter has the same power that Christ had. Where does this power come from? The Holy Spirit. God. God the Father, God the Holy Spirit. Christ was empowered. He was God in the flesh, but he was also purely man. He had the faith and he had the power from God that he could have prevented his death, but it wasn't God's will. Jesus was sent here for a specific reason. That was to teach and preach love, to heal people, to show his disciples, his inner circle, his 12, or his 11 as it turned out to be, before they picked another one. He empowered them. The Holy Spirit empowered them. That's what happened at the day of Pentecost. They were empowered by the Holy Spirit. They received the baptism of fire that only the Holy Spirit can give you. Peter has this. We'll learn later on, and I might have mentioned it in the previous uh, lesson, that he and Paul both had this power. They could walk by somebody and their, just their shadow healed them. But you know what? Healing takes faith. Probably more so from the person that's being healed than the person that's doing the healing, because the person that's doing the healing has the faith. They already know that they're empowered by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit sends them there to do this task. And it's not a big old ritual and all, all these garments and vestibules and sprinkling of the holy water and dancing and singing and carrying on. In Jesus' name. Amen. Big 
these towns are. But every last person in these two towns saw what happened and they turned to the Lord. So they're either Jewish or they're, they were Gentile, but now what? They are believers in Christ, Christians. You're wearing bracelets today, WWJD. What would Jesus do? What would Peter do? They want to be like him now. Now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. The woman was full of good works and all deeds which she did. This woman had the fruit of the Spirit. She was driven. She worked wonders for the Lord. She died. The point of another man. Once you be born, you're going to die. This generation, this group right here, we may not taste of physical death because of the promise of Christ. This woman did die. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died, whom they had washed and laid her up in the upper chamber. This woman had done wondrous deeds for the Lord while she was alive. She was Francis of this church. She did all that work. She didn't ask for glory. She didn't ask for money. She didn't ask for praise. She worked for the Lord because she loves the Lord. Now, this is very similar to something else that happened with Christ. This woman is dead. They've already put her up in the upper chamber, which is to separate her from the rest of the house because it goes against Jewish tradition and law to touch the dead. But at the end of this uh, chapter, we're going to find out that Peter did something else that was very like Jesus. And it came to pass, whoops, I already read that, and for as much as Lydia was nigh to Joppa, so it was close by, proximity maybe <coughs> Tappahannock to Warsaw, probably. The disciples had heard that Peter was there. Here's some believers in, in this town over here. Peter's over here in this town. And they knew, they believed they had heard of Christ raising the dead. Matthew, Mark, and Luke wrote about this. John did. What did Jesus say in John? I am the resurrection. Okay? And the disciples had heard that Peter was there. They sent unto him two men, desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. That's the only difference between Jesus and Peter in this story. What did Jesus do? He tarried for two more days where he was at. He was in no hurry. He knew what he was going to do, and he knew he could do it. These people were anxious. They were saying, go get Peter now. So that he would not delay to come to them. Then Peter arose and went with them. When he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber where she was laying. All the widows stood by him weeping, showing the coats and garments which Dorcas had made while she was with them. Here we have people weeping over the dead again. It's sad. I've lost loved ones. I've lost close friends. And I know how it hurts. I'm not going to say that this was why Jesus wept in verse 35 of chapter 11 in John, because it's not. Jesus wept at the doubt that these people were displaying. Why did you wait so long? This was your friend. That caused great concern for Jesus. Now, here's Peter. But Peter put them all forth. That means he sent
sent him out of the room. He emptied the room of all the grief and the boo-hooers and all those that were there. The first thing he did after he got rid of them, he knelt down and prayed. Alright, this was where I wanted to I want to do a study on this particular subject. This is what we call a secret prayer because he was in secret now. He had sent all the mourners out of the room. Some examples of secret prayer. Uh, Deuteronomy 9 25. Thus I fell down before the Lord forty days and forty nights, as I fell down at the first, because the Lord had said he would destroy you. Samuel, 1 Samuel 15, 11. It repenteth me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he is turned back from following me, and hath not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried unto the Lord all night, alone, in secret. Elijah, my favorite prophet, man. Woo, the fire prophet. 1 Kings 17, 19. And he said unto her, Give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom and carried him up into a loft where he abode and laid him upon his own bed. He prayed alone. And again, 1 Kings 17, 20. And he cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, hast thou also brought evil upon the widow with whom I sojourned by slaying her son? Daniel 6.10. Now when Daniel knew that he was, his writing was signed, he went into his house, and his windows were open in his chamber toward Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. Now here's Christ's command. Matthew 6.6 6, But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, Pray to the Father which is in secret, and the Father which seeth in secret will reward you 